So today, super important, before you get those costumes on and you get those kids moving on Wednesday, let's talk about Halloween safety for you, your kids. And if you don't have kids, if you're driving on the road, we're going to have a few points for you as well. Let's have a really super safe Halloween for all those amazing children out there who are ready to eat more sugar than they should ever eat. And the parents that are going to invade their little candy bags as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is their costumes. So number one, they should have clear vision. So, you know, whatever mask they have on, if they have crazy glasses, whatever they have on, they should be able to see clearly wherever they're going. Because remember, it's nighttime or it's dusk, depending on when you go out. And it's hard to see at that time anyway. So don't give them masks that are going to block their view. Don't give them crazy glasses that are going to block their view. Remember, they need to see. Watch out for makeup getting in their eyes, whatever you're using. Obviously, if you're using makeup, it should be easily cleaned makeup so they can wash it off before they go to bed so they don't have any skin allergies or issues and you don't have schmutz all over your pillowcases. Okay, so... Another thing about costumes, guys, if they're too long and they're going to trip on them, then there will be pain and suffering. We don't want pain and suffering. We want happy, fun Halloweens. So cut them off at the bottom or trim them or tuck them up or pin them up, whatever you need to do so your kids have clear walking. If you are going on at night, which I am assuming you are, Put reflective tape on their body, on their trick-or-treat bags, anywhere so that cars can see them coming and going, okay? You can have, you know, light-up shoes are awesome. Why? They light up. And so, you know, and you can stick a big reflective tape right back down their back or, you know, on their bags. They're going to have bags, pillowcases, whatever they're carrying, big kids, little kids. Make sure drivers can see them. Make sure their shoes are sturdy. Don't give them like flip-flops, things they're going to trip over. Okay, a lot of this is common sense, but honestly, we forget to think of these things because they're in costume. And of course, make sure they're fire resistant. You know, all clothing can burn, but different materials are less apt to burn than other materials. And luckily, except for homemade Halloween costumes, the stuff you buy in the store is very fire resistant. But make sure it's all fire resistant. Uh, you know, resistant. Their wing, their wings. Wings, they might have wings. <laughs> their wings, their wigs, their costumes, their hats, their whatever they got going on with that costume, make sure it's fire resistant. Okay. That's the costumes. Let's move on to the treats and the candy. Pre-wrapped, pre-packaged from a like machine is all you should accept unless you know where it's coming from. Like if your best friend or your next door neighbor makes a goodie bag full of cookies and stuff like that, you can be pretty sure that's good. I'm pretty sure your best friend's not poisoning your kids. But if they go to some random house and they give them stuff that may look delicious, maybe it's a brownie, maybe it's something incredibly delicious, is it really worth taking the chance? No, it's not really worth taking the chance. Throw it away. Make sure you inspect their candy before they eat their candy. You know, a lot of kids want to snack on it on the trip, and it sounds very wonderful to snack on it but inspect it first. If you're worried about it or you're worried that they're going to want to eat it right away, take a few pieces of your own candy with you in your pocket and give it to them to have a snack of a candy. I mean, obviously, how much candy are they going to eat? A lot. Limit it, okay? Limit that candy, which is the next thing. My kids, honestly, when they were growing up, they were allowed, I think, five pieces of candy max from their bags. And honestly, guys, the rest of the candy went into a jar. And because it pretty much sat out all the time, it wasn't a secret. I didn't hide it. 
It sat out so that people came over, they could eat the candy because there was so much of it. That that candy jar lasted always to the next Halloween. Do you believe it? If you had a candy jar in your house, would it last a whole year? It did in my house. It was amazing. So, you know, because I didn't restrict them. I just kind of had it there. And I had it there for guests. And I made guests. You know, I used to pawn it off on the guests. Okay. Dark nights, you need light. So light sticks, flashlights, those are all great. You can get the light sticks and hook around their neck, their wrists. So they're kind of lit up. You know, get the lights going. Flashlights are great. They can wear a flashlight around their head. They can get those goofy, like, straps you put around your forehead with a big headlight on it that my husband uses at work that my children make fun of them for. But they're great for trick-or-treating. You know, the headlight sticks right out your head. Um, so make sure there's plenty of light to, to uh, shine on their way. Okay, adult supervision. Guys, if they're not old enough to go out by themselves in the middle of the night, you should be there with them. You know, if they're teenagers, obviously, you know, they're old enough. But if they're young, don't let them just go on their own. Be with them. Watch them. Walk up to the door with them if you need to. And don't be afraid if, you know, you're going to the door because a house is heavily decorated you never know what a guy's going to look like. You know, sometimes they pop out and they are scary. So if you have a toddler, get ready for that toddler to scream because chances are they're going to freak out. You'll freak out because sometimes they're pretty scary. And, you know, I know the whole thing is to scare kids, but when you got little kids, it can be horrifying. So watch out, you know, watch out where you're going. Go with them when you need to. And always keep your eye on them. Don't have your eyesight restricted either. Which brings us to, did I miss this comment or did I put another topic? I'm going to bring it out now. And that was another topic. Pay attention. Put your cell phones down. Make sure you're watching your kids. You're not watching Facebook. I appreciate you being on Facebook. But watch your kids. Put the cell phones in your pocket. There's emergency. Somebody can call you. Don't sit there and hold your cell phone and look at your cell phone while your kids are trick-or-treating. Be aware of where they're going, what they're doing, and who they're seeing. Okay. Older kids. Let's talk about older kids for a minute. Talk about, discuss, and know the route your older kids are taking. Okay? Don't just send them off say, see you later. Have a great time. You don't know where they're going. It's dark. It's nighttime. Discuss the route they're taking. And then assign a time for them to be home. You know, set that time up. If they're going out at 8 o'clock, maybe they have to be home at 10. Make sure there is a time they are to be home. So if they're not home, you can find out where they are. Maybe if they have a cell phone, which I'm assuming they do, make sure it's on so you can contact them in case there's an emergency. Oh, and make sure they only go to places that they're familiar, neighborhoods they're familiar with, neighbors they're familiar with. I mean, if the neighborhood is familiar, it's their neighborhood, and they don't know everybody, not the end of the world, but then check that candy, check that candy. Um, and guys, when kids are trick-or-treating and older kids are trick-or-treating, in my eyes, you're never too old to trick-or-treat. You're never too old to be a kid. Let those big kids be kids. They have to grow up so fast these days. Let them spend a night being a kid. Don't make fun of them. Don't ridicule them. Don't, you know, say things to them at the door. Oh, you're too old to trick-or-treat. You're never too old to trick or treat. Why can't you trick or treat? We all like candy. Plus, they can share with you when they get home. You know, unless you're trick or treating, which, you know, better to eat your child's candy. Anyway, but, you know, it's good that a kid wants to be a kid. For God's sake, they grow up too fast. We need to let them be kids. So don't turn them away, please. Trick or treat in well lit areas. Don't go down some dark alley. You know, common sense. You know, sometimes it's not so common. 
use common sense and discuss that common sense walking and talking to your kids. Drivers, slow down. Stop looking at your phone. Stop doing whatever distraction thing you're doing in the cars. Slow down and look out for kids because some kids are not watching this broadcast. They're not having reflective things on or lights. And it's up to you and your headlights to see those kids. So please slow down. Please be aware of where you're going and who's on the street because there are a lot of amazing little humans that are the future of this country. We need a good future that we don't want to run over. So please, if you're driving on Halloween, take it slow, take your time, be aware, more aware than you've ever been. Make sure your lights are on and you're in, if you're in a neighborhood, you can see the kids that are walking around. And then we can all have a super safe Halloween.